Me gusta. Hello and welcome to episode 2 of Minecraft Complete Modding Guide and today I'll be talking to you about packages and base classes about what they are, how to create them and anything else about them I need to talk about. So first, what is a package? Well a package is basically a folder that contains all of your code and as you can see here, uh, these like kind of lines with like a square next to them with a kind of a plus sign in them that's a package and there's loads of them here and the great thing about forge is that when it decomposes minecraft it orders all of the code and stuff once it's decompiled into packages accordingly so for all the block uh, classes they're all in the package net.minecraft.block so it's a great thing for like finding the correct co um, class you need like pretty easily and another great thing about forge is that with your code when you make a mod you don't need all the code in random places so like all your item stuff in the item package and stuff what you can do is you can create your own package and have all your code in that one package which allows us to easily find our code and also easily order it so to create a package it's pretty simple you just uh, in the package explorer open the minecraft thing and when it's a source at the top you want to right click that and click new and then package and then here there'll be two things source folder and minecraft source you want to leave that and then the name you want to set that to whatever you want your package to be called so if you wanted a folder canary code called cake we would call this cake and click finish and what's done now it's created a package here called cake another thing is you can have folders within folders so if you do that again right click source new package and you wanted a folder within cake called butter you'd put in the name bit cake and then you'd put a dot and then you'd write the second folder, so the folder within that, so butter. And although it will show it separate, it, or it's displayed now, but basically, if you had like cake and then cake dot butter, it would have cake as a separate package of cake dot butter, but it will all be contained to the same folder physically. And I'll show you just that. Show you that now. So here I'm in MCP Source Minecraft, and it's got all our source code here now, and it's got like all the Minecraft source here, but if we come back to source minecraft you can see our package here cake and if we double click that we can see the folder within it we made called butter so all our code if we uh, with cake but if we put all our classes inside that all the code will be inside this butter folder within cake now you're probably asking how does forge detect if a mod's been installed if there's nothing nothing in the base directory of minecraft or nothing in that package that allows forge to detect it as a mod well that's basically what we're going to create now which is called a base class and basically that starts off as a normal class and then we add a few interfaces, a few things, import a few things into it and that turns that into a base class that Forge can detect. So to create the class within our package cake.butter you need to right click cake.butter and go new in class and then leave everything as it is but the one thing we want to change is name when you want to call it something so I'll call it something like base class something normal. It's good to have this all letters you can have uppercase and lowercase but make sure it's all letters and you can have numbers but make sure there's no numbers at the start or it won't work anyway once you've done that you click finish and that will create our class public class base class in the package cake.butter and now we're going to import a few things add a few annotations a few constructors or one constructor even which will allow this class to become our base class so the first we need to do is import four things and this these imports go between package cake.butter and public class base class um, each import starts with import space cpw.mods.fml.common and then for each one we add a different thing to import a different thing obviously the first import you want to put dot mod semicolon and that basically allows us to use annotation at mod which holds basic information such as mod id name version and other things but we won't need those other things and yeah, I'll talk to you about that in a minute the next thing you need to do is well, the second import I end it with dot network lowercase dot network mod with a capital N and a capital M and this basically allows this basically for another annotation at network mod which allows us to tell Forge if this mod needs to be on a client side or server side when it's working um, and yeah, I'll talk to you about that in a minute as well the next one you need to end with dot mod capital M dot event handler and that basically is for another annotation which tells the game which constructor in this class is going to be our initialization constructor. So that's a constructor which contains other stuff such as adding inventory names, adding recipe, recipes, recipes and other things. 
So stuff that happens when the game is initialized. And then the last one needs to end it with dot event lowercase dot fml initialization event with a cap fml or capital and a capital I at the start of initialization and a capital E at the start of event. And that's basically something just including the parameters of the initialization constructor to allow the actual constructor to work. I don't know why we need it because we don't actually need to use the parameter, but we need it in the I need it as a parameter in order for our initialization events to actually work. There are other things you in need to import, such as the game registry and language registry, which is used for adding recipes, adding names, registering blocks, etc., etc. But for the moment, we won't need those because that's n they're not needed in the base class. So my rule is always: if it's imported and you don't need it, just remove it because there's no point importing it. So now the first thing we need to do to turn our class into a base class is you include the annotation at mod. So you do that just before public class base class. You put at, and then you put mod capital M. So um, capital M and then od lowercase. And then put two brackets. No semicolon because you don't need that. And basically, this is the annotation which allows us to use to include the mod ID, the name, and the version of the mod. Now, the first thing you put inside the brackets is mod ID or lowercase. And what that is is a unique ID of our mod, which is used for a few things. But the main thing it's used for is for connecting it to our mcmod.info which sounds like gibberish right now but if you watch my next tutorial that will be all on mcmod.info and basically you would put mod id equals and you put two speech you put speech marks not two speech but just speech marks which two include anyway and what this needs to be is something quite unique so don't, if our mod's going to be a cake mod don't just call it cake because it needs to be unique from any other mod and probably some person in another mod's put it cake so you need something quite unique that no one's ever going to use before uh, at all so what I usually do is I put my username in abbreviation form at the start, so my, I'm 697, so I put SS97, and then follow it by the name of the mod, Cake. But if it's like a long name of a mod, so if it was like for the breakfast mod, because mine's the breakfast mod, each of those words start with T, then B, then M, so I put the breakfast mod. That's what I would put for, let's say that, but for our cake, we just put SS97 Cake. Then you put a, a blah, 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 comma. And then the next thing you need to put in is name, or lowercase, equals, and then speech marks again. And this is the name of our mod visible in the mods tab. So you know when you open Minecraft and it says mods, it's got a list of all the mods installed. This is a name that's visible there for our mod. So what we need to put here is what we want to see our mod to be called visually. So I'll call it tutorial cake mod. Awesome. Hello. So yes, something random like that. Then you put a comma again, there's a third one you need to put in, which is the last one we need to include, which is version. So you type version equals, and again, speech marks. Um, what version is, is the version of a mod as it is in its state. So if it's obviously the first version of the mod, which this is, it, it, which, this, this is which this mod is, then obviously you want to put something like 1.0 or 1 or 1.0.0.0.0. 1 but obviously if you have a new version of mod, you want to change it to 2.0 uh, or 1.2 or whatever. But for now, we'll put it 1.0. Now you may have seen with some mods, they have like an uh, other information in the mod style, such as like a banner, author's description, etc, etc. You don't actually include them here, you include them in something called the mcmod.info file, which is something that goes in the base directory of Minecraft, but you include, you know how you install mods, is like you just install the zip, so it wouldn't matter about where the location is. But basically, I'll talk about it in my next video, where we take out name and version, and we use a thing which tells us, use like a, um, another piece of code which tells us to look at the mcmod.info for all this information and then we connect the mcmod.info to this mod using this unique mod ID and then we, I'll talk to you about that in my next video but we'll tell you about all the things you can include. Now the next annotation we'll need is the at network one annotation so you put that just after at mod and before public class base class so you put at 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 network mod capital N capital M brackets and then there's two things that include in here. There's client side required with capital S and R on the side and required. And then there's another one separated by a comma called server side required. Yep. Um, basically, these things tell, for with client side specifically, it says, does this mod need to be installed on the client side or the local side to be played on the server? Server side says, does this need to be installed on the server to be played on the client? So that might sound a bit confusing, but what I always do and what you should do is put client side equals true and server side equals false. And again, no semicolon at the end. Now why I've done this, it's basically saying that 
yes it needs to be installed on a local game so on your minecraft files in order to be played on off a server but it does not need to be installed on the server to play off the client so basically if you want to play it locally on single player you need it installed in the game in your local files if you want it if you want to play on it on the server it needs to be installed on both your client and on the server now why this is good is because some mods that requires like local information stored such as if it was a currency mod how much money you have and such like that so that's why it's good to have it so if client side required equals true server side required equals false and try not to touch this unless obviously you want a mod that's only online multiplayer then you obviously set that to false and set that to true now the next thing to do which is actually the last thing to do is include our main initialization constructor and what we do is put that between the uh, parentheses I believe they're called yeah I learned a new word uh, of public class base class and you basically put here public void load brackets and then put two curly brackets or parentheses afterwards I don't think they're called parentheses they're called curly brackets but whatever uh, anyway inside the public void load two normal brackets you put in beside in, in, in beside in between the two normal brackets fml initialization event so what we've imported up here space and I put a name for it so such as event it doesn't really matter because we won't use it and that basically made that's basically made our public void load constructor a properly working initialization constructor for our recipes name inventory names registering blocks etc but before this just before you need to put at event handler and this makes the forward know that this is the initialization um, constructor so that's basically our base class setup. Now I'm going to show you how we can test this, and I won't tell you to the next few few tutorials. I'll show you this one. But how to test a mod is at the top. There's like loads of buttons. You want to find the one which is a green circle with a white triangle in it, which symbolises plane, obviously. And you just want to click that, or if it doesn't do it correctly, you press the arrow next to it and make sure you click client one client, and that'll basically load Minecraft based on what we've coded right now. And if it's loaded correctly, then obviously it will load properly like this. So yeah, I've got Minecraft open now and as you can see there's five mods loaded and usually there's three. And I'll tell you why in a sec. Basically you have Minecraft Coder Pack, Forge World, Mine Forge and normal things. And then you have our here, our mod here, Tutorial Cake Mod Awesome Hello, because remember that's what we called our mod in the name bit of app mod. Version 1.0 because that's what we put it as. And obviously there's no mod information found because we haven't got an mcmod.info file yet which we'll do next, uh, next time. And you might think, oh, why is a five if we meant to be four? Well, basically, I've got a mod modding already here in the game with an mcmod.info file, and that's a great thing about Forge. You can code more than one mod at any given time in the same MCP setup, because once you've recompiled and you know they all work together, you decompile, uh, you recompile and reobfuscate, and when you have all the classes um, created, they'll be in separate packages, obviously separate folders, so you can easily separate them and they won't be part of each other or anything so great thing about forge you can mo mod more than one mod at any given time and easily be able to separate the classes so yeah thanks for watching uh, like I said many times this video next video will be about mcmod.info where we can increase the amount of description we create in that mods tab for our mod and yeah I hope you like this video if you've got any more questions put them in the comment section below I'll have this code for the base class available for download in the description below and yeah hope to see you guys next video bye